men attack a train station in China. This is one that was picked up from the Daily Mail in the UK. Uh, we had it on InfoWars this weekend. When I went to China with my family to adopt my daughter, we made the mistake of trying to travel internally in the country on a train. We were concerned about the, we'd heard a lot of tales about the very small planes, the puddle jumpers that went internally between the different cities. And although the train service going between Guangzhou and Hong Kong is the finest that you'll see in the world, it's the equivalent of the best trains in Europe, the trains going within the country is a very different story. And when we decided that we wanted to take the train, they tried everything they could at the adoption agency to talk us out of it. But we were dead set that we really didn't want to fly. So when we took this train, they actually bought tickets so they could escort us physically onto the train. They bought tickets to go where we were going. They were so concerned about safety at the train station. And when we got there... There was this large loudspeaker that was broadcasting stuff in Chinese, a mass of people. You just cannot imagine how many people you see on the streets, especially someplace like a train station in China. And they were broadcasting on this loudspeaker. It was a blue and white thing. We could tell it was the police. And we asked our translator what they were saying. And they said, well, they're telling us how many people were killed here last week. And I said, wow. I said, I don't see any police. They go, oh, no, no, no. The police are too afraid to come here. They just broadcast messages warning you how dangerous this place is. So they, they escorted us onto the train. But this is an example of how government fails. When government doesn't, is no longer concerned to protect the people, it just continues to get worse and worse and worse. We've seen this for a very long time in America where the police make it very clear, courts have made it very clear that they're not there to provide security to you or protection. They're there to enforce policies. This is the logical end of where this all happens. And of course, the people there in China are disarmed. And so if you've got a bunch of knife wielding thugs coming through, it's a question of strength. It's a question of who's got the knives. Guns are an equalizing factor for the population. We've seen some police chiefs, like this one police chief who was, is now the police chief in Detroit. He came to this conclusion. He was a police officer in California. He was all for gun control. He got converted when he went to Maine and saw that he had a lot of farmers that were licensed to carry guns that had guns. But they were widely used, very low crime. He saw the sense of that, and now he sees the sense of it in Detroit. And then we had this case just a week or two ago where uh, a lady whose house is broken into many times fought off some attackers who were trying to do a home invasion into her house. She fought them off with a gun. It's the equalizer. The gun is an equalizer for someone who is a female, someone who is weaker than someone else, someone who doesn't know martial arts. It's a way that you can equalize it. It's a very important thing. It's one of the reasons we need to have it. Another reason we need to have it is so that we don't have a tyrannical government. I don't know if you're a Prison Planet TV subscriber. If you aren't, you ought to be. Last week, I talked to the Ukraine Right to Keep and Bear Arms Foundation. Actually, it's a Ukrainian Gun Owners Association. I talked to him and, and the quote that stuck out the most for me from that interview was he said, if you lose your guns in America, you will wind up like the Ukraine. That's right. You're going to be stuck between oligarchs and globalist bankers, and you're not going to know who's the, who the players are. You're just going to have endless corruption. Nothing will happen. The government will not be afraid of you. That's the situation that's in the Ukraine. The people took to the streets about the corruption. Of course, there's other elements that are being involved there, and we know that there's, there's a Western influence there that's trying to undermine and trying to create tension. And, of course, there's a lot of things that the military-industrial complex would like to see come out of this. Maybe they don't want a war. Maybe they just want another Cold War where they can ramp up the military spending like they had before the Soviet Union lost its credibility as a threat in 1989. Here's some other articles that were coming to. One-third of Americans say that Obamacare had negative personal impact. Nearly 60% say that they view the law unfavorably. Everybody is seeing their rates go up. People cannot afford it. Why? Because we're having to buy insurance for things that we don't even need. Insurance, in the first place, is not health care. Insurance can help you pay for your health care, but you can't pay for your health care if you've got to buy insurance as a single man if they force you to buy maternity insurance as a single man. And your insurance rates double triple, sometimes go up by a factor of five, that's not affordable care. That's simply a lie. 
Stay tuned. We're going to be talking to Kathleen Willie. We're going to talk about how America fell into this moral decline by excusing the lies of their presidents. It all began with Bill Clinton. Stay tuned. We're going to talk to her. We'll be right back. Has the perfect piece of gear for your bushcraft pack or bug out bag? Canteenshop.com. Want to be able to start a fire in any weather? Canteenshop.com. Need a well built handcrafted knife that'll be passed down for generations? Get to Canteenshop.com for the best selection of high quality hand picked gear from over 20 small U.S. businesses and big name brands to bring you the best that the bushcraft survival world has to offer. Canteenshop.com. What's missing? What's missing from your kit? We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. It's very very easy to be a criminal. All you need to burglarize a home is one simple household tool, a pair of scissors. If your home security system can be compromised by a criminal using scissors, then you're making it easy for them. Almost every home security system, even though sold by big name companies, has a weakness. The phone line. You shell out 1500 bucks, get locked into a long-term contract, and think you're safe. But a burglar can destroy your alarm in seconds with one snip. And when a burglar cuts your phone line, you're defenseless. Simply Safe Home Security is the smarter choice. Built by Harvard engineers, Simply Safe uses a wireless connection to call the cops. Scissors can't cut it, and that means your home stays safe. 24 7 professional monitoring is under $15 a month with no contract. Simply Safe Home Security keeps you safer than the other guys for half the cost. Protect your home with the alarm you can trust. Simply Safe. Go to GetSimplySafe.com now for an exclusive 10% offer. That's GetSimplySafe.com. Question, could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Life's getting better. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Watch him become a god. Watch Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. We're going to be joined in just a few minutes with Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. We're going to be talking about the Ukraine. We're also going to be talking about 
some changes in the way parents are viewed in the UK. And uh, that's the UK, not the Ukraine. So in England, we see that they're now going to have in Scotland minders assigned to children at birth, following them through 18 years of age. Very, very troubling assumption there that the state, not the parents, has the best interest of the child at heart, that the state will make vital decisions about the child's life. We already see that happening in the United States. There's something underneath this, which is called the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, that is actually calling for this. Now, the United States has not become a signatory to that treaty yet, but most other countries have, and we can see that in the UK, as the mayor of London is now talking about removing children if they think that their education is too radical, that's a very troubling thing. I can tell you as someone who homeschooled that uh, my children got a radically different education than they would have gotten. They got a very different version of history, as you can imagine, than they would have gotten in the schools. Very different political perspective. That's okay. We ought to be able to have diversity in America. We ought to be able to discuss ideas openly. We shouldn't have a situation where the government shuts that down. So we're going to be talking to Paul Joseph Watson. We're also going to have Anthony Gucciardi on in the show and Kathleen Willey, one of the women that was sexually assaulted or attacked by Bill Clinton. She wants to give us her perspective on Hillary Clinton. This is all brought up again because Hillary Clinton looks like she's going to be running in 2016, looks very much like the front runner. There's a question of character. Does character matter anymore? I think if we look at the, the what's happened in America under the Bush regime, you know, if, we, if somebody can lie under oath, as Bill Clinton did, and people give him a pass, his popularity goes up, I think that that tells us something. It tells the leadership something, doesn't it? It tells them that they can get away with lying. And then after that, we saw a president lie about weapons of mass destruction and get us into a major war. Now we see a president who lies about indefinite detention without trial by the military. He says, oh, I don't want to do that. I, I'm not going to sign that. Signs it on midnight uh, uh, at New Year's Eve, late at night. He says, don't worry, I'm not going to use it. So I guess we can trust him after he's lied to us twice already on that. We see him using the IRS and the FBI against his political enemies and doing it openly, continually to do it after it's been exposed. See, Nixon and other presidents have done it, but they've done it covertly. When they did it and got caught, they got impeached. They got thrown out of office. Actually, Nixon resigned because the handwriting was on the wall. He was going to get thrown out. Now we have presidents who do that same sort of thing openly, continue to do it even after it's brought to light because they know that the American people are so divided along this left-right spectrum, this Democrat-Republican spectrum, that they no longer care about the criminal actions of their guy, the guy that's on their team. As long as it's not the other side, they're going to excuse it. Let's take a look at some of the other articles that are up on Infowars.com. We've got Obama now brandishing his phone at Putin. This is pretty funny. There was a a White House photo that was tweeted out where he looks like the man in charge. He's wearing denim shirt and denim pants. He looks very Reagan-esque. And people were having a lot of fun with it. They said, uh, one of them says, uh, this picture of him on the phone for 90 minutes with Putin. But what he didn't tell us was that he was on hold for the first 87 minutes. Uh, and another one says, okay, he's got his phone, but did he threaten Putin with his pen? This is brinkmanship. This is very dangerous brinksmanship. This is like what Khrushchev did when he went to the UN and took off his shoe and pounded the podium saying, we will bury you. These types of things and then moving missiles right to the doorstep of Florida. These types of provocative movements that we see the Obama administration engaged in right now, that we see John Kerry engaged in right now. It's very difficult to understand what's going on in the Ukraine. As I mentioned on the Prison Planet TV, uh, the nightly news last week, I spoke to someone from the Ukraine Gun Owners Association. There are people there who think just like we do, who want their independence, who want their freedom, who are fed up with corruption and government, and they want to be left alone. But there are also these groups that are coming in from international bankers as well as Putin's oligarchs. The corruption that's there is rampant. And we're seeing both sides of that. These people are caught in the middle. It's very difficult for us to know who the players are. It's difficult for the Ukrainians to know who the players are. What we do know is that we should not be going abroad seeking monsters to destroy. And we should not be engaging in this kind of brinksmanship 
that could very well start World War III. Now stay tuned. We're going to be right back with Paul Joseph Watson, and we're going to talk about the Ukraine. We're going to talk about what's happening in the UK, the war against families.